Welcome back to our NPTEL course on scanning electron ion probe microscopy in material characterization. Uh, so far we have uh, discussed on uh, some of the major parts of the scanning electron microscope including the electron guns and electron magnetic lenses and their roles. Uh, we have discussed uh, on uh, different type of electron guns that are used in scanning electron microscope and then how electromagnetic lenses such as condenser lens, objective lens are used to condense the electron beam and also focus on the specimen surface particularly of the uh, different type of objective lens. Then we have also discussed on the electron probe uh, diameter that is the beam size and also the probe current and how the minimum current is required to observe the required signals. Uh, then we have uh, discussed on the electron beam specimen interaction when electron beam incident on the specimen surface are uh, different type of signals generated and we have discussed on those signals particularly secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. In today lecture we will be discussing another major parts of the scanning electron microscope that is detector which detects the signal generated from the specimen. Going back to oh, previous uh, lecture where we have discussed on the electron beam and specimen interaction and generation of signal, we have seen that uh, secondary electrons and backscattered electrons are generated from the specimen which are of interest to our uh, microscopy purpose or for creating the images. As you see here secondary electrons are generated from the region where electron beam is incident and the electrons secondary electrons which are generated from the region where electron beam incident is called secondary electron 1, this is the SE 1. The energy of the secondary electrons are less than 50 electron volts, but um, most, mo much of these secondary electrons have energy less than 10 electron volt. And the takeoff angle of these secondary electrons are also low as you see the angle between the specimen surface to this takeoff angle is small. And in addition to the secondary electrons the incident beam also pass through this specimen to a more depth and interact with different atoms. In this process it dodge scattering etcetera and while it comes out with a larger and uh, with a higher energy that is we termed as back scattered electrons it also produce some more secondary electrons those are termed as secondary electron 2 AC 2. These are also have energy less than uh, 50 electron volts, but backscattered electrons have energy greater than 50 electron volts and their trajectories are certainly different. Backscattered electrons are emitted towards the electron beam with a larger takeoff angle or the, uh, on the other hand secondary electrons takeoff angle is small and their trajectory is different. So, this is what we have discussed and we have also discussed that the secondary electron yield or secondary electron coefficient that is delta is increases significantly with tilt angle, tilt angle theta, tilt angle this is increases as a second, a second function, this is secondary electrons coefficient which increases significantly with increase in the tilt angle. Therefore, more suitable for three dimensional imaging purpose. On the other hand, backscattered electrons coefficient which is termed as eta which increases with increase in the atomic number or z that is the atomic number. So, with increase in the atomic number in the specimen, the yield of backscattered electrons increases significantly. Therefore, secondary electrons are more suitable for three dimensional image or surface imaging getting the surface morphology. On the other hand, backscattered electrons are suitable to know the phase difference or the difference uh, the elemental distribution if in the specimen if there is higher atomic number uh, atoms and lower atomic number 
atom present in the specimen. In addition, backscattered electrons provides information about uh, crystallinity of the material. And as, as the secondary electrons are emerged near the surface, therefore, they are more suitable for high resolution imaging and also surface morphology. This is what we have discussed in our previous classes. So, today we will be discussing how these secondary and backscattered electrons are collected and here before going um, before going to discuss about how the secondary and backscattered electrons are collected here you see uh, two images one is secondary electrons image another is backscattered electron image in the left side what you see is a secondary electron image of a sample of alumina Al2O3 and nickel composite in the left side image you see that there is no much change in the brightness in the specimen you could see the grains and their grain size can be measured in the left side secondary electron image certainly it is a quite a flat type of sample in the right side uh, you can see there is a clear cut difference in the brightness some of the region that can be seen are very bright for example this region is very bright this region is very bright this region is very bright this region these are all very brighter region and this brighter region indicates the material which has higher atomic number in the sample. Uh, the backscattered electrons image will not able to tell which uh, atom is uh, atom from which atom these uh, 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 signals are coming, but it can say that uh, it is coming these brighter region are from a higher atomic number atoms in the specimen. As we know this sample is a Al2O3 nickel composite material. So, we can say that this brighter region are the nickel because nickel has higher atomic number element. So, from this brightness, di brightness difference we can say how nickel is distributed uh, inside the specimen the distribution of uh, nickel in the composite material of Al2O3 nickel composite. So, this is the backscattered electron image BSE image and this side is SE image and you see how you can distinguish uh, the distribution of nickel in the composite from the backscattered electron image. This was collected at a acceleration voltage of 2 kV. So, coming to the detectors, uh, we have uh, uh, um, we should have a detectors that would detect secondary electron and backscattered electrons. And the position of the detectors, uh, there are four important uh, factors that has to be taken into consideration uh, while, cons while considering the detector. First is the position of the detector relative to, relative, relative to the beam and specimen. We have seen the trajectory of secondary and backscattered electrons are different secondary electrons emerge with a low takeoff angle, whereas backscattered electrons emerge with a higher takeoff angle towards the electron beam. Therefore, their trajectories are different. So, the position of the detector is important in collecting the number of secondary and backscattered electrons. If the detector a is placed in the right position that would able to collect more number of secondary electrons or backscattered electrons depending upon the position of the detector. First thing. Second thing is the size of the detector. Certainly, if the detector size is bigger, then it would able to collect more number of secondary electrons or backscattered electrons. And then our signal will be more, big, signal will be more because those secondary electrons or backscattered electrons will provide such the signal. So, the position of the detector uh, relative to the beam and the specimen is described by a takeoff angle psi. This is the takeoff angle psi this is what and the size of the detector is given by a solid angle with a unit steradian and the area of the uh, and the size of the detector is uh, nothing but uh, the capital omega here which is equal to the area of the detector divided by the square of the radial distance from the face of the detector to the uh, point where electron beam is incidenting on the specimen surface. 
So, the size of the detector omega is equal to a that is the uh, area of the detector phase divided by r square the radial distance from the detector phase to the incident beam uh, striking position. So, this is about the position and size of the detector. Then third point is the efficiency of the detector. How efficient is the detector in converting the generated uh, secondary electrons that the, the secondary electrons and backscattered electrons which strikes the uh, detector, how efficiently detector will convert them those to the signal. More efficient detector would able to convert signal more efficiently that means, whatever the secondary electron strikes on its surface it will be able to convert it to signal if the detector is more efficient. Uh, as uh, um, backscattered electrons have a larger or wider range of energy therefore, it is important that detector should able to process all the backscattered, backscattered electrons of different energy but actually uh, the detector may not able to process efficiently when the energy range of the backscattered electrons is wide. So, here comes the importance of the efficiency of the detector a detector which should convert all the electrons that are striking to striking on its surface to the detectable signal that the efficiency of the detector and bandwidth of the detector or amplification system is nothing but that as we know that in, in this SEM, in the SEM electron beam, beam is striking on the surface of the specimen, it stay uh, for a specific time and then it moves to another point. So, the signal is collected or secondary and backscattered electrons is collected as a function of time. So, uh, bandwidth refers to the range of the signal frequencies that detector can process. So, in addition to that as the electron beam goes from one point to other points, then generation of the signals also varies depending upon the features on the material. So, it should also able to process the wide varieties of the signals coming from the specimen. A larger bandwidth is preferred for the detectors. In um, there are two scientists who developed the detector for the SCM and that bears their name Everard Thunley. This is the scientist Thomas Everard and Richard Thunley developed the detector uh, in 1960s uh, and the detector name therefore called ET detector which efficiently detects the secondary and backscattered electrons uh, with little noise and uh, with high robustness. And afterwards, after 1960s, this discovery of an efficient detectors uh, increases the uses of scanning electron microscope uh, in the scientific community. Uh, so, this Everard Thunley detectors, uh, we, we are going to discuss more detail about this ET detectors now. As you see in this slide, uh, electron beam one, once electron beam strikes on the specimen then let us say secondary electrons are generated and these secondary electrons will go and strike to the to the uh, fluorescent substance called, uh, on, on the detector. This fluorescent substance is here, this is the fluorescent substance. The secondary electrons will go and strike to the fluorescent substance. Once it strikes to the fluorescent substance, it will produce the light and that light is passed through a light tube which is made up of a quartz material through the internal reflection and it will go and then strikes to the photocathode or photoelectric conversion phase. This is photoelectronic conversion phase. So, once it strikes to the photoelectric conversion phase, it will create electron hole pairs and those electrons will be bombarding on to different electrodes in a photo multiplier. So, this part is our right part is our photo multiplier. In the photo multiplier there are several electrodes which are called as di anode. The electrons are striking to the di anode and once they strikes to the di anode 
uh, the multiplication occurs that is why the term is called photo multiplier the electrons are multiplied to a large number with a gain of approximately 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 that one electron striking to the coming out of the photo electrodes uh, one electrons coming out of the photo cathode will produce 10 to the power 6 electrons when it goes out of the dianodes or photo multiplier. So, as you see here the photo multiplier uh, have dianodes and these dianodes have a potential that is that we are um, applying a bias potential that this bias potential can be also varied and by varying this bias potential or bias voltage we would able to uh, change the gain or vary the multiplication. So, first thing is that secondary electrons is coming out the uh, out of the specimen and striking to this scintillator or fluorescent substance that is a scintillator or fluorescent substance to produce the light. Now, as we know secondary electrons have lower energy less than 50 electron volt most of them have less than 10 electron volt. So, they are not highly energetic they are not highly energetic. So, therefore, they cannot strike with a high velocity to fluorescent substance to create more light that they are accelerated. So, the secondary electrons are accelerated by applying a potential of around 10 to 12 kV. This potential is applied to, to a aluminum coating given on a fluorescent substance as you see aluminum uh, metal is coated on the fluorescent, fluorescent uh, uh, scintillator on the scintillator. So, by applying this a large potential we would able to collect the low energy secondary electrons and in addition to that not only um, uh, it will um, collect the secondary electron but also it will increase its uh, the velocity and it strikes with a higher energy because of the large bias voltage applied to the aluminum film. And then uh, it goes to produce light and uh, increase the um, electron gain. Now, as you see we are applying a large bias potential to the aluminum film coated on the scintillator. So, this is around 10 kV and our electron beam uh, which is incident beam is also have energy of around uh, can be from uh, few volt to several kilo volt uh, normally let us say 10 kV. So, this high voltage of the detector material could affect the incident beam, uh, beam, beam therefore, in order to avoid that we have a another uh, um, covering on uh, covering to the detector that is called Faraday cage. As you see Faraday cage, this is our Faraday cage, this Faraday cage is covering the detector and the Faraday cage is insulated from the uh, detector or scintillator. This Faraday cage is given a smaller potential or smaller bias minus 50 volt to 250 volt. So, this Faraday cage would uh, prevent the high bias applied to the scintillator affecting the electron beam striking to the specimen. So, Faraday cage in addition Faraday cage have another role uh, by applying a potential either positive or negative potential we can selectively collect either secondary electrons or backscattered electrons. If we apply let us say minus 50 volt then we would not collect a single secondary electrons because all secondary electrons have a energy less than 50 electron volt. So, by applying a minus 50 volt to the Faraday cage we will all reject the secondary electrons only we will collect energetic backscattered electrons. If we apply a positive potential to 50 volt to the Faraday cage then we will collect both secondary electrons and also back some backscattered electrons the backscattered electrons which have a energy greater than 50, uh, 50 volt. So, we would able to collect both secondary and backscattered electrons by applying a positive bias to the Faraday cage. So, in this way the electrons which are generated either secondary electrons or backscattered electrons can be collected by this detector or called ET detector or Everard Thonley detector or this is not when we apply a positive potential we can say that it, it is a combined secondary and backscattered electron detector because it collects and detects both secondary and backscattered electron. By choosing the suitable potential we can able to only collect only backscattered electrons, but when we apply a positive potential 
we collect both secondary electrons and backscattered electrons. However, the position of the electrons will determine what percentage of secondary and backscattered electrons will be collected. If you remember the backscattered electrons emerge or the takeoff angle is towards the electron beam towards the electron beam. So, if we place the detector at the side of the specimen then we will collect more number of secondary electrons as compared to the backscattered electrons. And the yield of the secondary electrons and backscattered electrons also depends on several other factors that we have discussed in our uh, previous classes previous lectures. So, now uh, here uh, here you see uh, the photographs which is showing the a uh, Everett uh, ET detector uh, actually the position is here uh, if you see here this region this region you can see a cage Faraday cage there is a metal cage. So, that is the secondary electron detector here it is here in this region uh, is the uh, ET detector placed uh, inside the specimen chamber of a microscope. So, this is the metal cage and inside which we have Everard Hanley detectors to collect secondary electrons primarily. So, now uh, effect of bias on the ET detector that I have discussed briefly uh, so uh, now and you see now uh, if we apply a negative bias let us uh, that is 50 uh, volt to the uh, ET detector then only backscattered electrons will be detected and all the electrons which have energy less than 50 electrons electron volt uh, 50 um, electron volt will be rejected uh, by the detector. Moreover, uh, uh, the detector position is also very important to collect either more number of secondary electron and backscattered electrons. Here you see the relative collection uh, of backscattered electrons emitted from the surface of the specimen. As more number of secondary electrons are emerged or, or more number of sec secondary electrons emitted towards the electron uh, incident beam. Therefore, if the detector is placed close to the uh, incident beam then we, we would able to collect more number of backscattered electrons if the sample is not tilted. But if the sample is tilted as you see in the right side image if the sample is tilted the uh, yield of the backscattered electrons or trajectories of the backscattered electrons sorry the not yield it is the trajectories of the backscattered electrons will change. So, for a tilted sample backscattered detector or a detector placed close to the specimen would able to collect more number of backscattered electrons. So, that position of the detectors plays an important role to collect the number of backscattered electrons. Then positive bias, positive bias certainly will attract more number of electrons towards the detector particularly the secondary electrons because secondary electrons have low energy. And in addition it will also collect, uh, attract low energy backscattered electrons and that would enter through the Faraday cage and subsequently it will be accelerated by the bias given to the scintillator. And thus we will able to collect a large number of secondary electrons and low energy backscattered electrons by applying a positive bias. As you see in the tra how the trajectory of the secondary electrons are here given trajectory of the secondary electrons and secondary, elect secondary, detect uh, secondary electron or ET detector is placed in uh, at an angle around uh, 30 to 45 degree from the specimen and in the right side you see by changing a positive bias uh, in addition to collect uh, the secondary electrons we would all uh, that would also uh, uh, deflect some of the uh, backscattered electrons uh, backscattered electrons and by doing that uh, for example uh, what will uh, for example the backscattered electrons which is uh, emerging and going upward or towards the electron beam, uh, it may uh, it may miss its uh, uh, it will miss its um, uh, angle of uh, uh, emerging uh, angle of uh, 
uh, takeoff angle and it would go and strike to the pole piece and in the process it may also strike to the chamber wall by striking to the chamber wall uh, it would uh, produce more number of AC3. If you remember uh, uh, as we discussed in previous lecture the electrons which generated from the pole piece or chamber walls are termed as AC3. We have AC1 which comes out from where the secondary uh, from where the incident beam incident uh, beam is a strike on the specimen AC1. AC2 is a little away from the uh, uh, the position where the beam strikes when the backscatter electrons goes, uh, goes comma comes out that is AC2 and AC3 is the secondary electrons which uh, are produced when a backscatter electrons uh, is incident on the pole piece or the chamber walls. That is nothing but indirect collection of backscatter electrons by a positively biased ET detector. So, as the backscatter electrons uh, angle changes they will bounce and they will strike on the chamber wall also and that would produce a more number of AC3 by applying uh, uh, positive bias to the uh, detector. So, here is a here are two photographs one is collected with positive bias and one is collected with negative bias. As you see in the left side the image which is collected with a positive bias is seen uh, much more clearer uh, with more uh, clarity uh, of their three dimensional features. On the other hand in the right side image that you see where in the by applying a negative bias we collect fewer number of uh, electrons fewer number, number of secondary and backscatter electrons therefore, it is looking as a darker and not giving a very clear uh, surface image. So, it is all due to the number of secondary and backscatter electrons collected at the detector by applying either positive and negative bias to the detector. Then we have another type of uh, detector called uh, throw the lens detector. It is normally operated in a semi ill lens objective lens or snorkel type objective lens. Here uh, if you remember we have three different type of objective lens we have discussed one is out of lens, one is in lens, one is semi ill lens or semi ill lens is nothing but snorkel type objective lens where the sample is placed inside the objective lens almost inside the in, uh, objective lens and we would therefore can have a much smaller working distance and thus we can go for a much higher resolution image. As you see here sample is placed much close to the objective lens and by applying the magnetic field suitable magnetic field the objective lab lens projects onto this uh, to the uh, sample from where secondary electrons SC1 and SC2 are generated and they are, they are trapped by the ma applied magnetic field and follow the trajectories upward in the lines of magnetic field and our detector is position, position above the objective lens. Detector is placed above the objective lens. In B, previously uh, most cases uh, uh, we, uh, our detector is placed just above the specimen and below the objective lens. In this cases throw the lens detector where a, again it is a ET detector here, but that is when that is placed above the objective lens we say it is through the lens detector. As uh, th um, the electrons uh, the uh, through the lens uh, TTL detector will only detect SC1 and SC2. It will not able to detect SC3 because SC3 uh, electrons comes out from the region below the pole pieces from this region SC3 comes out or from the chamber wall. AC3 come out because here, because here our TTL detector is above the objective lens, it would not able to collect AC3. So the uh, secondary electrons which are generated near the uh, near the uh, beam striking position or beam incident position will only be collected using this detector. In modern uh, microscope. Uh, detector there are double detector one detector is placed below the objective lens other detector placed above the objective lens to improve the performance or getting high resolution image. So, 
So, then we have also uh, dedicated backscattered electron detector. We also have a dedicated backscattered electron detector. Uh, as you have seen, backscattered ele uh, electrons have a different trajectory to the secondary electrons. So, we can put the detector in a position that would able to collect only the backscattered electrons not the secondary electrons and most of the modern microscope use dedicated backscatter detector instead of combined ET secondary and backscatter detector. So, as you see here uh, in the left side uh, there is two detector let us say one is having uh, posi position at a close to the specimen this is position close to the specimen and this one with a away from the specimen with a high take up angle. So, this way you we can collect depending upon whether specimen we are tilting or not tilting. We can change the position of the backscatter detector and then collect more number of backscatter electrons by applying either applying a negative potential or negative bias or without applying a bias negative bias that means unbiased condition we can collect the backscatter electrons. In other cases here as you see in the right side here the detector is placed just below the pole piece or objective lens as our backscatter electrons are mostly emerged towards the electron beam we would able to collect the backscatter electron more efficiently if the detector is placed above the specimen or just below the uh, below the pole pieces. Moreover there should be opening at the uh, middle of the backscatter detector so that electron beam will pass through the detector and strike to the specimen. So, in a present day microscope uh, it is the mostly uh, the backscatter detector is placed below the um, below the objective lens and you can see this is in the this photograph uh, that is uh, this is the backscatter detector it is a uh, it has it has a same material uh, that is a, scintillator and light guide have uh, of same material it is designed in a manner that that would be placed uh, just below the objective lens this is our objective lens as you see in the middle there is a hole in the middle there is a hole through which electron beam will pass and strike the specimen. And then when uh, backside electrons emerge from the uh, specimen in upward direction they will be collected by this backside detector. Who, uh, the name of this backside detection is called Robinson backside detector because of the scientist who uh, have developed this detector. We can have also uh, we can convert backscattered electrons to secondary electrons uh, uh, secondary electrons by using a suitable uh, uh, um, process uh, this we will uh, discuss in our uh, next lecture. So, today we have discussed about uh, the ET detector Everard Thunley detector and also backscattered detectors uh, and how does by applying the bias we can collect only backside detector or secondary and backside electrons from the specimen. Thank you.